So Goodreads do this list every year titled something like the best books of 2024 or the hit books of 2024 so far or the most popular books of 2024 so far and it basically is a collection of the 2024 releases that have come out this year that are like most popular, most buzzy. And I started last year doing a vlog where I read some of the books from it and we're gonna do it again this year because I enjoyed it so much last year. So the way they do this list is they separate it by genres and what I try to do is make sure I've read a 2024 release from each genre. So if I've already read, I don't know, a sci-fi that's on the list, I won't read a sci-fi from the list. So we're just trying to have read one from each genre and that's basically what it is. I'm gonna go through the list together and pick what ones most excite me and then we'll go ahead and read them. So shall we flip back to past Megan because I now have collected all the books. <laughs> Let's flip back to past Megan and find out what hit books of 2024 we are going to be reading. Okay it's Megan in the past finding out what books we're going to be reading for this video. Is this screen recording? Yes it is. <laughs> in case I need to get my hands on some of these books. So it's here, it's advertising it to me. Top books the year so far. I went on this accidentally, full disclosure, with my patrons the other day. We only looked at the mystery sort of category and even then I can't really remember what's in it. So Let's find one from each category that I want to read. I feel like last year when I did this video, I read maybe five books. So we'll see. <laughs> okay, interesting. Contemporary and historical fiction. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I Own the Women by Kristen Hanna. I'm excited for this one. I did enjoy The Nightingale. It made me sob. It makes everyone sob. <laughs> so that's a good option if I haven't read anything else in here. Never heard of this. Never heard of this. Oh, I've heard of this author's previous book. What was it? I can't remember. Marta, this, well, there we go. <laughs> Interesting they combined contemporary and historical. I feel like they wouldn't usually do that. Like literary and historical, are usually very distinct categories. Was there just not enough exciting books come out? Tell me, Goodreads. <laughs> Tell me. Yeah, I guess this is an easy choice because I own the women and I'm excited to read it. I could read, I mean, if I didn't own the women, I'd be reading these all these descriptions. I like that they've done descriptions this year. Last year, they didn't. Last year, it was just the pictures of the books. So this may help us out when we don't know any of the books, so we need to pick one. Okay, I had a little sneak peek. The next category is mysteries and thrillers. <laughs> My bread and butter. First, we have First Fly Wins. I have heard so many good things about this one. It is one I do want to get my hands on. Go. <laughs> Back off, Rita. <laughs> Security, can you please escort this lady over here out? No, absolutely not. Not reading. Well, I probably will read that by the end of the year because it'll be nominated for the Goodreads Choice Awards. Yes, I am reading the nominations for the Goodreads Choice Awards Mystery Story category next year. I'm debating being crazy and trying to read the top 20. Don't, don't. <laughs> that's like the craziest thing I've ever said in my life. Don't talk to me about it. It's it's a debate that's going on in my head currently. This this is interesting because it does give us a clue as to books that will be nominated at the awards at the end of the year because I remember last year there was a lot that were on this list that made it for the awards, like Homecoming. I was in denial that they were gonna class Homecoming as a <laughs> historical, because it is a historical, but it was on the mystery thriller category and I ignored it. So we just gotta trust this as like kind of biblical <laughs> portents of what the, the awards are gonna be. Listen for the light, I have seen people reading this. Home is where the bodies are. Childhood home, some of course old video played it. Well, interesting. Oh, I've read one. <laughs> Oh, the last one I didn't want to say, well, there's, they're fucking hell, they've got like 20 on here. That's interesting. A lot of these I would say are almost definite to be nominated. Like we were talking about this actually on my um, Patreon live stream the other night. I said First I Wins, I said The Teacher, I said The Heiress, I said Last Murder in the World, I said One Perfect Couple. I think are all gonna be nominated. If I had not already read How to Solve Your Murder in my last vlog, <laughs> I would have probably read, oh, would I read The Last Murder in the Rod? It's the one I own, so probably. Or maybe, like, I'm tempted for First Light Wins, even though I don't own it. It does intrigue me. But anyways, we've read one from that category, so moving on up, moving on. Anyway, next we've got Fantasy. And the first one is The Familiar by Lee Bodega, which I'm very excited to read. <laughs> I never know how to give the synopsis of this one. Um... Jewish curry maid must fight against murderous bigotry when her knack for magic attracts the attention of royal spies, mad alchemists, and the Spanish Inquisition. Interesting. This will be my choice if I haven't read anything else I imagine. Not reading this because I read the first book. This, uh, this My first book of this year was the first book in the series and I didn't love it. So not reading that. Book of Doors. <gasps> Wait. Oh, maybe we're reading a tainted cup. So many people have told me that I'm going to love this. 
Oh, uh, wait, no, we're not. <laughs> We've read the whole amount of ghosts. I would class that more as a historical than a fantasy. Yes, it does have magic in it. I would class that more as a historical. What else have we got? Okay, I'm going to have to read. <gasps> There's a romantic category. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, we're not reading either the Tainted Cup or the Familiar. I mean, I do make the rules. I can read them if I want, but I know there's going to be loads of categories, probably. If we've only got, like, two books at the end, maybe I'll come up and choose another category to read. But I don't think that'll be the case. But I have read The Warm Hands of Ghost by Catherine Motherfucking Arden. Probably my favourite 2024 release I've read so far this year, unless I'm forgetting something. Um, exchanging glances, scooby dooby doo yeah, my only five star that I've had. Okie dokie. Next is Romanticy. <gasps> Absolutely not. Uh, <laughs> too far into the series. No. Okay. I'm just going to scroll through these. Okay, right. We have... I'm going to say we have th well, the fourth instalment. Is there any that is not the first? Is either of these the first in the series? Or not the continue? Okay, number one. Number one. Got a 4.3 average rating and a 4.21. I prefer the cover of this one. Oh my god, I'm gonna have to read this fucking book. <gasps> uh, um, I can't even read the synopsis. I can't even read, it's not going into my brain. 184 of my friends, oh that's just not, that can be if they want to read. Okay, quite a few high ratings in that one. Let's have a look at this one. Okay, no. Interesting, interesting. I'm gonna go with this one. The sun up the cover is per is purely cover, but it appeals to me more. Wait, no, actually, 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 is there a distinct difference in page count? Oh, oh, sorry, I'm definitely not reading this one. It's 790 pages. <gasps> Why are these so long? Oh god, I hate this. Okay, sci-fi. Interesting. I've heard a lot of good things about Annie Bot. Um, oh, the Ministry of Time. Wait, it's just scroll through. Baby X. Okay, it's between these two. I've been very intrigued by both of them. Government agency that gathers time space experts from across the vast. I'm do I'm reading that one. Espionage for the science fiction romance and workplace comedy. I'm reading the Mystery of Time. I've almost bought this a few times. I think it sounds really interesting, and it's been really hyped. So I'm reading that one. Although I have heard really good things about Annie Bob, so I I'm still intrigued by that one. Horror. Oh, interesting. Okay. I put, when we were talking about this last night, I thought Murder Road by Simone St. James would be a dead set for the mystery thriller category. However, they're putting it under horror. They've always put under mystery thriller. Why are they doing this? Okay, that's interesting. I really want to read Murder Road, actually. I'm, I was going to buy it later today because there's a specific edition that I want to get. So I need to get my hands on it. Interesting. But that's, that's kind of crazy to me. They put it under horror. My darling... Dreadful thing. Okay, our decision has been made. We're reading Murder Road. <laughs> okay, romance. Funny story. Oh, just for the summer. Oh, I've read one. I've read Bride. Otherwise, I probably would read Just for Summer. I'm intrigued by Emily Henry funny story as well. But we have read Bride. I don't like how there's like three for some categories and then like ten for others. But anyways, moving on. Young adult. Never heard of this. Who oh, I've seen people reading this. <gasps> The reappearance of Rachel Price. We may have to read that. Oh, the Tempest of Tea. Oh, we're sleeping as light. Okay, okay, okay. There's a lot that I'm intrigued by here. I'm intrigued by a Tempest of Tea and we're sleeping as light, but I own the reappearance of Rachel Price. So that's what we're going to be reading. I I was actually looking up the Goodreads rating earlier today because I was intrigued. I remember it being quite high like when it had just come out, and I was wondering whether it had gone down a lot because I've heard mixed things about it. Are you comfortable? I'm scared. Are you scared? Yeah, I You should be. And then we have non-fiction. Okay, let's just scroll through this quickly and see if anything jumps out at me from the title. <laughs> Am I gonna read RuPaul's autobiography? Wait, does he does he voice the the mem the audiobook? Yeah. Okay, we'll read RuPaul's autobiography. <laughs> I think knowing how RuPaul speaks, I mean, of course, it's going to be interesting. It's a very interesting life. But knowing how RuPaul speaks, I am worried that it's going to be a bit, you know, my inner saboteur. <laughs> okay, I've got to read that, though. That's interesting. Okay, so we have got six books to read. A few of these I own. The Romanticy. <gasps> 
Let's not talk about it. Let's not talk about it. Um, I'm excited. So I'm going to go get my hands on these books. And once I do, we shall start this reading vlog. Good evening, friends. How are we all doing? I am halfway through the first book of this vlog. I went for the Ministry of Time because I was discussing uh, this with my, some of my top tier patrons on our Zoom call and which one I should start with. And I've heard mixed things about a lot of the books by, well, I have three, three books in this vlog I've read from those authors before. I've read from Holly Jackson before, some Monty Jones before, and I've heard mixed things about both of those books. <laughs> And The Woman by Kristen Hannah just didn't feel like a starting book. It didn't feel like the book that was going to get us going, you know? So I decided to start with this because it seemed like a fairly accessible, quick read. And it is proving to be that. So this is basically, all you need to know is we've got a civil servant who is hired in this job to be the bridge, i.e. the kind of caretaker, watchover person of an individual, a commander, that is being brought back from the past. The British government, I guess, <laughs> the British state, has discovered how to time travel and how to bring people back. And so they bring back this, or bring forward, I guess, <laughs> this group of people from the past who were all projected to die pretty soon afterwards in like freak events or whatever. Um, they bring them back so that it wouldn't affect history but they can kind of test time travel and that's basically all you need to know it's about them living together it's set ever so slightly in the future there's like a climate emergency happening i mean obviously it's a climate emergency happening now <laughs> but like a much more pronounced climate emergency happening and blue not even much more like slightly more like the heat wave in Britain in London is like 46 degrees. And I think we had 40 last year for like a day or two. So like, it's not like out the realm of possibility, but it's far enough that you're like, shit, <laughs> shit, shit, shit. So this is a very interesting book. It's a debut. And there's something about the writing style that is very unique. And I think serves it well and doesn't. It's got a very unique look on the world. And like, there's moments where it's talking normally, talking normally, talking normally. And then it switches to like a very philosophical slant on humanity or like almost sarcastic inside monologue internal monologue kind of critique of life or there's moments where I feel like I'm really following and then there's moments where I really feel like I'm really not when I first started this the first like 60 pages I would say felt like a five star felt like five star potential I don't know if it's quite feeling like that now I'm having a bit of trouble all the um past people <laughs> refer to each other as like numbers as their last two numbers from their years so, like 1916 or whatever I don't know if that's actually one of them, but 1916 would be 16, or 1847 would be 47, you know? And I just, I'm forgetting which one of them is which. <laughs> they're like, 16 said this, I'm like, who the fuck is 16? Who the fuck is 16? I'm not being funny. Who are you? Judge Judy. And I'm feeling like some of those characters, we have quite a lot of characters, and I'm finding some of them aren't fleshed out enough, or aren't like, tangible enough for me to follow who they are but in some cases I think that's intentional because there's like some underhanded maybe spy shit going on behind the scenes it's very very interesting it's a very very interesting book I'm enjoying it I'm kind of having to relearn how to enjoy reading <laughs> because the last month or so has not been that obviously I've been life's been shit and the books I've been reading have been shit mostly <laughs> All the not stuff I've enjoyed. And I'm like having to recalibrate how to enjoy reading a book. How to be like, oh, I'm really enjoying this book. And like, how to not to say to you. I'm like, uh, suddenly I, I don't know what to say. <laughs> but no, I'm really enjoying it. I really like the main two characters' relationship. It's, you know, it may be romantic. I don't feel like it has to be romantic. I feel like it might skirt the line of being romantic and just being like, life fic <laughs> you know like that's life like I don't have to explain it like not like a romance subplot but like people who are into each other and have love for each other like kind of like tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow very different because that's like the whole plot is how they're in love with each other but not you know in a relationship but that kind of like skirting of feelings so not necessarily a romance subplot but romantic feelings I don't know anyways I'm really enjoying it and I'm really enjoying the thoughtfulness of it it is just quite clever but it's subtly clever and it's like it's trying to hide its cleverness and sometimes that throws me off a bit but I am still very very much enjoying it so I'm gonna read as much more as I can tonight 
and yeah I'll probably let you know in the morning when I finished it what my thoughts are but I'm enjoying it and I'm excited to see where the second half takes us because I feel like a lot of interesting plot points have been set up that was quite the plosive p anyways I'm gonna go to bed love you guys <laughs> I'll see you in the morning. Hello humans. Um, there's someone cutting hedges outside, so apologies if you can hear that. <laughs> I've finished the Ministry of Time and I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. I'm gonna give it four stars, but you know when you read a book and you're like, I wish, I wish I could give you more than, I wish I could give you five stars. I wish I could give you five stars. I can't even give this a 4.5. Like it is a four in terms of my enjoyment. I had a few issues with reading it with sometimes, like I was mentioning, like feeling out of the loop with it. Like feeling like, oh, I'm reading it. And then I've lost the train of thought. I've lost the moment. But I think sometimes you meet a book that is so unique and so special and is doing something different and that and feels fresh, right? And that's what I feel like this book is. Like I can see why it's become so popular. Why are so many people enjoying it? And I really wish I could give it a five star. I really wish I could because I think it's so special and I'm very excited. I almost spat then with my excitement. <laughs> you know, this is a debut and I'm so excited. For a debut, I think it's absolutely marvelous. And I'm so excited to see what the author writes in the future because I'm, I'm definitely gonna keep my eye out because um, it's such a unique book. It's such a unique book. I don't want to almost tell you too much more about the plot and the plot elements I enjoyed, but I I just loved our main characters and their relationship. And I really enjoyed the second half of this, how the kind of sci-fi element developed. And, um, you know, got a bit more sci-fi and the ending I really enjoyed. It just feels like a very, you know, like I said this before, certain books have a gravitas to them, have a like, you can tell a lot has been poured into a book. Someone has poured a lot of their self into this, has poured a lot of research into this, has poured a lot of time and effort. I, have, I think I've talked about this with like books of the historical slant. I felt like it would babble with warm hands and ghosts where you can just tell that there a lot of effort has gone into it. So, yeah, I think this is a very, very special book. There were moments where my reading of it wasn't entirely like smooth, but I think it's very, very unique and I would recommend it. It's one of those books that I feel like I can recommend to anyone. You know, there's certain books I read and I'm like, well, yeah, this is a niche subsection of my audience, but I feel like I could recommend this to any one of you. Everyone loves me. Well, the old bastard hates me, but they're just wrong. I feel like any one of you could pick this up and get something from it. And that's a good thing. That's why I can see why it's become so kind of widely mass market appeal popular. Particularly here in the UK, I've seen adverts for it fucking everywhere, like on book, on a uh, book, <laughs> on the bus stops, I was say book stops. Yeah, I, I really, really, really enjoyed it. And I, um, you know, I loved the political element of it as someone who's very interested in politics, the idea of this ministry being set up and like having a little bit of inside knowledge <laughs> on, you know, how these kind of departments work. I thought, I wonder if she comes from like a governmental background. Doesn't seem to, but like seem to have a pretty good grasp on some of the background elements of it. So yeah, I really enjoyed this. We have a lot of reading to do. We have a fuck ton of reading to do. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse my French. I feel like I'm ready to start the reappearance of Rachel Price because we have a lot of authors in this vlog that I've read from before. So I feel like we have to read one of them. And I just feel like I want to see what I think of this. The reappearance of Rachel Price. The font is teeny tiny in this one. I'm nervous. I can't lie. I'm really nervous. Obviously, I'm very nervous because I did not enjoy Five Survive. I did not enjoy Five Survive. I did not enjoy Five Survive. Me and Holly were struggling. I love the sprayed edges though. Uh, we're in Struggle City a little bit, me and Holly. Um, so we'll see because I love a good girl's guide to murder, but Five Survive was rough and I have heard mixed things about this one. So let's go and see, let's go and see and see what we think. But the synopsis really excites me. So I'll check with you once I've read a little bit of it. Um, but the synopsis really intrigues me. So I'm hopeful, but I'm nervous. We'll see what I think. Hello, I have done a terrible job of reading today. <laughs> Let's not talk about it. Hey, cool. Flop. Girl, you have done it again. Constant lowering the bar for us all. I am 100 pages into The Reappearance of Rachel Price by Holly Jackson. And basically what has happened is the synopsis. So we're following 18 year old Belle who has lived her entire life in the shadow of her mum's disappearance. She disappeared when she was, I think, almost two-ish. She's been missing this entire time and now a documentary is being made and Belle and her family are being interviewed. And then Rachel turns up. Her mum turns up. Says, hey bitch. Surprise bitch. 
I bet you thought you'd seen the last of me. And that's basically it. And I was enjoying it at the beginning, but I was finding it a bit slow. But since like the 40 pages, since when it's really heated up with like the mum arriving, I could not put it down. I've been speeding through this shit. <laughs> so hopefully I will read the rest pretty quickly as well. It's very interesting. It's a very humorous writing style. It's a very different writing style. I feel like Holly Jackson does do something well where she kind of like inhabits the characters even though we're not it's not written from first person perspective it's written third person she does the writing style and habits kind of personality main personality main character so like in a good girl's guide to murder pip is very like analytical uh focused and i feel like the writing style kind of reflects that and in this one bell's like a bit of a little shit <laughs> Belle? Yeah, her name's Belle. Uh, a bit of a little shit. Like, she's quite funny. She, like, has a go at people. So there's a lot of, like, dry, sarcastic humour in this. It's interesting. It's a very interesting book. The mystery is kind of just being set up as do we believe the mother's story as to where she's been? And like, it's kind of like the initial reaction. There was no <laughs> initial reaction to like her mum being back is like, this is sus. And I don't know how I feel about that. I don't know if that's entirely realistic. <laughs> like both, neither her or her dad are like, well, I'm so happy you're back. They're just like, what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? So I don't know, that's an interesting perspective as well. But the synopsis is pulling me in. The plot is pulling me in. I wish, like, I wish there was mixed media. There's not, there's not really mixed media. She teased me at the beginning. She teased me. She teased me with like an IMDB page for the Disappearance of Rachel Price documentary, but alas, we have no mixed media. And that makes, you know, two books without mixed media. I'm like, Holly, just get back to your roots and give me like a little bit of mixed media. I know you want to become like a stereotypical mixed media author and you want to do something else, but like, come on, uh, come on. Like just do a little bit, just a little bit. Just throw a little bit in. Do you think me. that I'm going to take writing advice from a booktuber? Oh, honey, it's my sister. <laughs> you better take, listen, Joy, you better take it from somebody. <laughs> I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. I'm interested to see where it's gonna go. It's only really just gotten going, but I'm gonna try and read as much more of it as I can tonight. We'll see. Um, but yeah, I, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing where it's gonna go. And I think Holly Jackson often picks very interesting, multi-layered main characters to write from. Hello, darlings. I am a lot further in. I'm on page 290 of the Reappearance of Rich Price. I do not necessarily have a lot more thoughts. I don't know how I feel about this. I think this is the kind of book that I'm really gonna know how I feel about it at the ending. Like, I think this could go very wrong or very well, depending on the resolution. I'm I'm reading it propulsively. Like when I pick it up, I'm reading it fast. Like I don't wanna put it down. I'm invested, I'm interested in what's going on. But do I think any of the characters are particularly well developed? If you ask me, if you had a gun to my head, I'd probably say no. <laughs> probably say no. Yeah, I don't know. Here's the thing, it's a step off from High Survive. It's a step off from High Survive. High Survive, I was like, kill me now. Like, <laughs> kill me now from the get-go. I hate the way it was written. I hate all the characters. I thought the writing was like pretentious and strange and weird. And like this, this is better. This is better. This is better. And I'm, I'm enjoying reading it, but do I, am I? <laughs> I don't really know. This is good. This may not be good. I just want to ask Holly Jackson, please go back to writing in the UK. I just don't, I just can't, I don't think you get US social economics, social economics, social culture, social, social like, the, I don't think you get it. You got the UK so well. I don't, I just don't, you just feel like a UK author, baby. You just feel like a UK author. And you're like, oh, I watched an interview of hers. And I think this was more, um, is there a cat? No, the doors just open. Those doors just open. <laughs> okay. I was watching an interview Five Survive. She was like, oh, I'm publishing more books set in the US because like you can do more fun things with guns or there's a lot of true crime over there. And I'm like, there's nothing really that's happened in this so far that could not have been set in the UK. And you would just get it better. You would just get it better. I also just can't really get over the way that our main character is treating her mother. <laughs> Here's the thing. Her mother, the, the aforementioned Rachel Price, she's a bit sus. She's a bit sus, right? And she probably will turn out to be sus. This is not me like pledging to her innocence. However, she's a bit sus, but up until maybe the 200 page mark at least, I feel like everything that she did and everything that happened could be explained away by a woman who's been held in captivity for 16 years, which is what she's saying has happened. And like none of her family 
are trying to provide any kind of aftercare or like they're all just like especially our main character she's like they're all just like immediately disliking and suspicious of her but also not also like oh we support i i don't get it <laughs> i don't get it and like the main characters are meet literally she meets her mother and she runs away she meets on the street tattered clothing bloodied like limping on the street and she's like oh gotta go <laughs> like, she hasn't even met the woman hasn't even heard anything about her so yes she could be sass but i think i would have liked a longer realization of suspiciousness rather than being from the get-go i don't believe her don't believe her don't believe her <laughs> yeah i don't know 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 how me and holly jackson are doing after the iconicness that was a good girl's guide to murder on that note i am currently watching good girl's guide to murder which my review of will probably be in the last video i'm only two episodes in not loving it a little bit boring a little bit not terrible honey you've got a big storm coming uh, a little bit boring Anyways, I'm going to go, I've got reading sprints to my patrons. I'm going to go finish this off. I'm hoping, I'm hoping things will improve. I'm like propulsively reading it, but when I sit down, I go, how good is it actually? You know? So anyways, yep. Let's go read with my patrons. <laughs> okay, it's late. <laughs> Have I got any Jacko and Tate? I did. I just had Jacko and Tate for dinner and it's like zonked me out. I am like exhausted. I, I'm not a human. I'm just a jacket potato. Do you remember, I, the, the fact that Americans don't really have jacket potatoes is crazy. Like, there's like a, a Universal Studios in Florida. <laughs> Outside of one of the Harry Potter lands, there's a there's a jacket potato cart. And the Americans were like, what is this? Jacket potato? I'm sure some of you do. Some of you will be like, I'm American and I eat jacket potatoes. But it's not as regular as it is. Anyways, I finished the reappearance of Rachel Price and it took me a long time to decide on a rating. It took me a long time to decide on a rating. I'm coming down at a 3.5, but I almost did it at three. When I first entered it into my spreadsheet, I said three. I said three and then I thought about it and I'm giving it a 3.5. Here's the thing. This book really makes no sense. <laughs> This book really makes no sense. The characters' motivations for doing things, the characters' explanations for doing things, the way characters feel after certain things happening and are just okay. Like, yeah, okay, this is my life now. Or like, yeah, yeah, okay, you know. The way characters feel is without much nuance and it's just like, eh, you know. <laughs> okay, it really makes no sense. But I did have fun reading it. Like I, I, when I was reading it, I read it fast. I was reading like 50, 60, 70 pages in like 40 minutes. I was like, wow, they're like speeding through this shit. But do I think it makes much sense? No, no, there's issues with it. There's a lot of issues with it. The more you think about it, the lower your rating may become, <laughs> but I'm choosing to give it 3.5. I'm choosing to be positive because I did have fun, but like, <laughs> it's really an awkward silence. Like how much sense this makes because it doesn't make much sense at all i just think holly jackson here's the thing pip was an amazing main character and just her main character since she's been trying to she tries to do unlikable characters right when you watch interviews i watch many holly, holly jackson interviews i always love going to a holly jackson zoom when there's a new book out and um she always talks about how she likes writing unlikable main characters and like Belle is annoying she is she's infuriating at times but at times it just feels like for the sake of it it feels like for the sake of it and the the shit that Holly Jackson main characters are willing to do to just further the plot is absolutely chronically insane like <laughs> they're just like yeah I'll break the law here I'll break the law there in ways it just doesn't feel realistic and I saw I was reading through we had like a discussion section on this in my discord and I was reading through what see people said and someone said like Belle is the kind of main character you know nothing of outside the plot. Like, I do not know who she is outside of the plot of this book. You know what I mean? Whereas they were talking about how Pip had so many layers to her as a main character. And, you know, there's just a lot of problems with this. I think that's pretty forgettable. The documentary is purely there so that people think Miss Holly Jackson is back into mixed media. Careful, it's a trick! It's, it's a teaser. It's a teaser. It's a falsehood. It's a fiction. It's a fiction because the documentary has zero influence on the plot. Zero. By the end of the book, they turn up again, the documentary cast, and they're like, this is a minor spoiler, but they're like hugging Belle and shit. And I'm like, who are you? Why are you hugging her? You don't know her. You don't know her. You know what I mean? You don't know her. 
why are you hugging her? You've had nothing to do with this plot. Anyway, apart from one character, one of the characters is like very much in the story, but the rest of the documentary, zero. It's just so Holly Jackson's like, yeah, I got a book with a documentary coming out. And everyone's like, oh, there's gonna be mixed media. Zero mixed media. It's all a lie. It's a falsehood. And the documentary is just in there to tease us easily teased folks. <laughs> So, you know, me and Holly, I think she needs to spend longer writing her books. From what I hear, she keeps writing them in a couple weeks from what she says. I mean, I don't think that's true. And like, is she talking about the first draft? Like, you know, I just think it's it's much better than Fire Survive. It's much better than Fire Survive. But just take some time, Holly. Just take some time. Take some time. I know publishing doesn't always allow for that, but take some time. But yeah, it's better than Five Survive. So that's that. I'm so tired. I'm going to get cuddled up in bed. I'll probably actually watch another episode of Gagar's Guide to Murder TV show. But I think the next one I'm going to start is The Women. I think this is the point I want to read it. I was thinking about Murder Road, but it's a very similar kind of vibe, I think, to The Repentance of Rachel Price. And I think I've got a good reading momentum. And so it makes sense to read one of the slower books. So I'm aiming to read quite a lot of this tomorrow. I'm just kind of reading tomorrow and watching Gagar's Guide to Murder, my two things to make sure my two videos this week happen. So I'll hopefully chat to you tomorrow once I've maybe got halfway through this I assume I'll probably just check in halfway because it will be a bit slower um so maybe my thoughts will be a bit slower but yeah I'm really looking forward to starting this and seeing what I think of it because it's got a super high rating on Goodreads it's like 4.64 or something on Goodreads it's now one of the highest rated books on my um on my Goodreads my own TBR I was looking the other day so isn't it exciting so yeah anyways I love ya I'm gonna love you and leave ya um yeah, Holly Jackson, we're not in as bad a book as we once were, but we're still not at the lofty heights of the Good Girls Guide to Murder trilogy. <sighs> I just want to look into that brain, like, because I know that brain wrote as good as dead. Like, you can do it, Holly. You can do it. Like, that is, like, a work of art. Do you want me to, like, take you on holiday? Like, I feel like you need a break. Anyways, night, guys. I hope I ended up checking my day my deeds. I can't tell. Okay, bye. Hello friends, um, apologies if I look a bit red, I've been sitting out in the garden all day <laughs> reading this. I am about halfway through The Women by Kristen Hanna. So all you really need to know about this is we're following one young woman, what is her name? Frankie, oh my god that's so bad, I've forgotten her name, who comes from a very well-to-do you know, dinner dinner party family, posh, you know, they're, they're, they're rich babe, they're not povos. And she decides to volunteer as a nurse in the Vietnam War and we're following her basically and her horrific experiences in that and that's basically all you need to know I think it's a very different reading experience than what I usually read right like when I'm thinking about what to say to you usually with a mystery or a fantasy or more genre fiction I kind of can like pinpoint tropes of the genre that it's maybe doing well doing well or whatever or characterization this isn't necessarily about plot or characterization it's just about like experiencing it so obviously it's writing about horrific horrific things and I think it's you know, important and interesting to hear about that. I'm enjoying it. Like I said, I was saying to my patrons before I read this, like if I had to predict how I feel about this, it would be like a solid four star. And that's basically how I'm feeling about it. Like it's readable. I'm enjoying reading it and it, it's good. Like it's, it's, not, it's inoffensive. Well, obviously it's like horrific, I, but I'm saying as a book, it's like, it's fine, you know? The one thing I would say is I don't feel very attached to Frankie. I feel like in The Nightingale by Kristen Hannah, I felt a bit more attached to the main characters and I don't really, feel attached to her and we're like halfway through the book and she's really all the only person we're following. I feel like at this point in the story something needs to happen. I think she's about to go home and I feel like I need that you know shift in perspective and shift in location because it's been a lot of kind of the same stuff although it's been interesting. I think Kristen Hannah is a really accomplished writer. This smacks to me of like she could write this in her sleep at this point. I feel like she's published like 20,000 books. I mean I don't want to count but the list is long of her books. <laughs> and I feel like at this point, she can kind of just churn them out. That's kind of what this feels like. It's great. The craft is great. The storyline, the, the importance of what it's saying, I can see all that. And I'm, I'm enjoying reading it. It's pleasant enough, but I don't think it's gonna be particularly memorable. So yeah, that's where I'm at. It's okay. <laughs> no, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. It's a four star. It's a solid average four star. It's not 
pushing into always oh, at a 4.25, 4.5. It's maybe leaning like 3.75 if I'm being honest, but I don't do core rating. So it's like a solid average four, but I would like to get a bit more attached to Frankie as a character. And I feel like this second half, surely I must do. So yeah, it's long, it's slow, you know, it's a slow paced, you know, you feel like you're kind of crawling through tree treacle reading it, but not in a bad way, you know, <laughs> I don't know. I'm gonna go finish it. I'm gonna try and get as close as I can to finish it today. I'll let you know my thoughts when I do, probably first thing in the morning, but you know, it's, it's enjoyable. It's an enjoyable read. And I feel like Kristen Hannah's books, she maybe is gonna like be like the historical fiction version of CJ Tudor for me, where CJ Tudor is always a four star thriller book for me. I feel like maybe Kristen Hannah is gonna be like always a four star historical fiction for me. I just finished The Women and I really, really enjoyed it. I much preferred the second half of this. I'm still gonna give it a four star, but now it's more leaning like 4.25 than it is 3.75. I really enjoyed the second half of this. There was something about the second half of this that I could just not put down that I found I think I became more connected with Frankie as a character and really became invested. I think Kristen Hannah just does historical books very well. I mean, I've already read two, but it does make me more interested to read more of all these other ones. You know, I think it's a book you can tell has been gestating a long time. I think she said that in the back, she came up with the idea in 1999 or something like that. And I think you can tell that it's something that her subconscious has been working on for a long time. I do think there's some issues with it. There's certain parts of it that feel perhaps a little bit unrealistic, particularly with the kind of relationships that Frankie cycles through. But I just, I mean, I have nothing really to say that I really enjoyed it. I feel kind of the same way I felt about The Nightingale, where like, this is a really good book. I think you'll really enjoy it if you pick it up. I think, you know, you can have a nice time. But do I think it's memorable? No. But did I have a great time reading it? Absolutely. I felt like I could really imagine it and it felt very vivid. I think, you know, what this was saying about women often being forgotten throughout history is something I'm obviously very interested in. Like I read a lot of nonfiction about women. What happened to listening to women? Are you serious? Who have been very influential throughout history and history has forgotten them. History is, is male dominated and male focused. And um, you know, I really appreciate that about this book, but I don't think, I can see people saying it's too long because it does drag on. I can see people saying Frankie is unlikable because she's this rich kind of spoiled girl. Like everything that kind of, you know, outside of the obvious, to not talking about her experience in Vietnam, but you know, every anything that goes wrong is sorted for her by someone, you know? So I can see people critiquing it, but I just had a really nice time reading it. This vlog is very one note so far. <laughs> I can't tell you guys how much I'm craving a five star. Like I feel it in the pit of my stomach. I, I, I haven't had five star for months. Has it been months? I don't know. I definitely know how many last one. <laughs> it's been a while since I last had a five star and I'm just like ravenous. For a five star. So hopefully maybe we'll get one in the you know rest of this vlog. I don't know. <laughs> maybe. Um, but anyway, let's read our next book. I think I'm gonna pick up RuPaul's memoir next. So I'll let you know, maybe when I finish that, because I think it's quite short. Hello friends. I have finished The House of Hidden Meanings by RuPaul, and this one's a little bit tricky to rate. I think I'm gonna end up giving this a 3.5. I'm going to use the trap door. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, memoirs are always difficult to rate. I know some people don't rate memoirs. I tend to, because I tend to like, my rating is usually my enjoyment scale. So I do tend to rate them, but this one is tricky. So this one follows RuPaul basically from birth up until I would say the early years of mainstream success. The last couple chapters are mainstream success, but a lot of it is to do with him struggling as a young adult, finding his way, finding his way in the drag scene, finding what he wants to do in his life. And I just think this is a bit rushed. It's a bit short. It doesn't have the deep introspectiveness that I would expect from RuPaul. If you've ever watched RuPaul's Drag Race, you know RuPaul is obsessed with like introspection and the inner saboteur and like getting to the root of emotions. This is your new home. I'm your new mommy. <laughs> <laughs> and like, I feel like it had a few moments of introspection, but they were almost surface level. I think 
I prefer memoirs personally that deal with a really focused either topic or period of time. So something like Bad Feminist by Roxane Gay is a series of, it's not just a memoir, it's also a series of essays and opinions about the world, but it's got a focus. It's got a narrow focus and she's writing about different points in her life through that lens. Or you have something like Know My Name by Chanel Miller, which is obviously incredibly emotionally intense about this terrible event in her life and the couple years following it and a really focused amount of time. I think for a book to be pretty short and to be spanning this amount of time, I think it almost does a disservice. I think RuPaul could have had more to say. I just felt like there were moments where I was like, I want a bit more from that. I want to know more. I feel like you could go into, it just feels a bit quick and a bit rushed. You know, RuPaul got the deal to write. And I don't even know, like, did RuPaul write this or was it a ghostwriter? I haven't been able to find anything about, I mean, if I did, if I dug, I probably could, but like, there was no, there's no obvious mention of a ghostwriter. Yeah, it just feels like it's a bit brief. You know, the audiobook is only seven hours. I would recommend if you read it, read it solely via the audiobook. That's what I did. And you know, I'm glad I read it. I think it is interesting if you're interested in RuPaul or RuPaul's Drag Race. It's an interesting read. I wouldn't necessarily buy it physically. I would just listen to the audiobook if you guys can access it. Like it's a tricky one to rate because it was interesting, I was engaged, it went by fast but it went by fast because there wasn't as much depth to it as one maybe would have hoped. So yeah, if I'm honest I don't have a ton of opinions on it and I feel like some of it is stuff I know already. It was interesting <laughs> reading, if you guys watched in my recent video of celebrities pick what I read and I read Party Monster about, the it's a murder within the club kid scene and it's, oh, what's the guy's name, Michael something? The guy who got arrested for the murder. He is briefly mentioned in this and RuPaul's like, I always hated him. <laughs> he doesn't mention what he did, but he's like, oh, I hated him and I hated having to work for him and he was slimy and horrible and I just thought that's interesting. I, I, I was interested when I read that because RuPaul's mentioned in Party Monster. I was, because I knew I'd be reading this soon, it was, it's interesting to see those kind of two, not, not the same events, but same kind of like landscape, social landscapes compared differently in each book. But anyways, yeah, I think if you're a fan of the show, you're not going to lose anything by reading this. It's very fast. RuPaul narrates the audiobook, so go for the audiobook. But I just think like we could have focused it really deep, like maybe really focused it on like the kind of rough years of drag, like the kind of club kid, like more like subversive years of drag before RuPaul adopted this kind of like supermodel aesthetic. Maybe like those years, I, I don't know. I just feel like RuPaul has this, lived such an interesting life. He almost could like publish five memoirs <laughs> from different time periods and it would have been a bit more effective. But anyways, Time for our next book. I don't know what it is going to be yet, but you'll see right now. <laughs> I've been reading books for this log for like three weeks at this point. <laughs> I don't really know how it's happening. But we're almost there. We're almost there, guys. I'm halfway through, a little bit over halfway through Murder Road um, by Simone St. James. I don't know what I'm thinking of this. I'll tell you what I am thinking of it. I just love this edition. I keep looking at this, the map on the back and the map on the front, and it makes me so happy inside. So at the very least, I'm glad I got this edition. I showed it to Tom, he was like, oh my God, yeah, it's like Scooby-Doo. <laughs> I can't make my mind up what I think about this. So basically what we need to know is we're following a young couple on their honeymoon while they're driving to their honeymoon and they find this woman bleeding on the side of the road. They take her in. She dies in hospital from her wounds and they're kind of like the chief suspects of the police for who's killed her, which kind of makes no sense when you think about it. Cause like, why would they, it's like on a bad and stretch of road they find her. Why would they take her into hospital and announce themselves and complete strangers in this town? <laughs> when they could just like, I don't know, it's like in the 90s or something, like drive away, just abandon her. Anyways, if you're the killer, that'd make more sense. Anyways, so they're trying to figure out what's happening. And like my prevailing feeling about this book is you could convince me it's a four star, you could convince me it's a two star. I guess that comes down to a three, but like, I don't know if it feels like that. It feels like I'm gonna go one way or the other. I am enjoying it. It is propulsively readable. I don't wanna put it down. It's very quick, very easy to read, but there's something about it that doesn't feel like Simone St. James. It's a conspiracy theory that I'm actually interested in. I've read two Simone St. James. I've read The Broken Girls, which I adored and I gave five stars, and The Book of Cold Cases, which I really enjoyed and gave four. Oh, and I've read Ghost 19, which I enjoyed as well, which is a, it's just like a really short story. Her books, the best way I can describe this is her books usually have this sophistication to them that this is lacking. I feel like I'm reading like 
a new author who maybe is like indie published or is like a smaller author, smaller publishing house. It's just like a fun, supernatural thriller horror. Like, it's not that serious, you know what I mean? And that isn't necessarily a bad thing, right? But it's not what I expect from Simone St. James. I feel like her books usually have this like gravitas and seriousness to them. And there's something about this that feels like it's trying to shoot for campy, but is just resulting in a bit cheap. Does that make sense? I don't know how to describe it. It just doesn't feel like it has the aura of her books. And like, I guess I've only read three, it's only my third book from her, but I feel like the more you read an author, the more you get to know them and the more you kind of like, rec like when I read, like same, similar genre, when I, when I read a Riley Sager book, I know it's a Riley Sager book. When I read a Ruth Ware book, I know it's a Ruth Ware book. You could convince me another book has been printed in this. <laughs> <laughs> that has the same synopsis as the Simone St. James murder road. But like you could convince me this isn't her. You could convince me this isn't her book. So I don't know how I'm feeling about it. Like it's fun. Like I'm enjoying reading it. But do I think any of the characters are particularly good? No. Do I think the plot makes much sense? No. Do I enjoy the supernatural element in this as much as I've enjoyed the way she's done it in other books? No. So... Yeah, I really don't know, but I, <laughs> I feel like I could enjoy it in the second half and I could equally not enjoy it. I don't feel particularly attached to the plot or the characters or anything going on. I don't know. I feel like I'm going to come back to you with strong feelings either way. But right now I'm just like, I've read that very fast. Like it was easy to read with my eyes. Like I got through it. <laughs> okay, great, uh, great gowns, beautiful gowns. But like, what do I actually think about it? I'm unsure. I'm undecided. So I've got some reading spins on my patrons now, so I'm gonna go ahead and get on them and hopefully finish this tonight. So I'll hopefully see you in the morning with my final thoughts. But but yeah, I'm a bit unsure of my thoughts on this right now. So it's not the next morning, it's still the same day. I am still on reading spreads. I have to finish this book so quickly. I'm still on reading spreads. So apologies if you can hear my laptop because it's like taking off. Um, I still don't really know how I feel about this, but I think I'm gonna give this a three star. I think it's settling down on a three star. Here's the thing. I think this book feels unfinished. I think it feels like a first draft. The characters feel like they need to be fleshed out still. The plot feels like it needs to be fleshed out still. The, the town we're in feels like it needs to be fleshed out still. There's the kind of sequence of events. Like I would not be surprised if I read, was reading a scene and like it, at one point, it, like during like a dramatic scene, it said, come back to this later in brackets. <laughs> That's what it feels like. It feels like an early draft and that is so disappointing to me. I can see the glimmer of it. Like it reads so fast. Like I, I literally have finished this book. <laughs> like I did not think I would finish it this quickly. I've read it so fast, but I don't think it was particularly good. This is minor spoilers for Simone St. James's other stuff, but I think it's pretty well known about her stuff. So I'll put some up on the screen, but I do think it's quite minor. Simone St. James does this thing where there's a hint of supernatural in all her books. I go into her books now expecting there to be a supernatural element, kind of similar to Riley Sager now, where there's always a supernatural question in his thrillers, like, is there a supernatural element? And sometimes there is, and sometimes there isn't. I go into Simone St. James' books expecting there to be a supernatural element. However, the previous two books I've read from her, it's been a whisper. It's been a whisper in the wind, you know? It's been a ghost of a ghost. <laughs> and I think that works much better. In this, the supernatural element is introduced maybe like 20 to 30% of the way in, and it's very, very overt. And I just don't think that's what suits her. I think this more kind of gothic, eerie, haunting, slow, atmospheric book is what I expect from her. Whereas this is like ghosts and the nannies and it's crazy. <laughs> it's like trying to be like, wow, I don't know how to describe it. But it's way more overt with it and over the top with it. And I don't think that's what works for me from her. So that's really where my disappointment comes. So really the issues are too much supernatural element and everything is just like, I don't care about the characters. The characters have zero character development. They feel like, oh my God, it's like edgy. <laughs> you know, it just, it just doesn't feel like a Sonja Jones. I can't get over the fact this is her book. I can't, so I don't think it's terrible. I didn't want to put it down. I read it so fast. My eyes are moving at the speed of light, which I did not think is going to be happening with our next book. You know, there are pros to it. I think if you're looking for something to get you out of a slump, this would be great. If you're on a reading slump, pick this book up. You're not necessarily going to think it's great, but baby, you're going to finish a book. You're going to finish the book for the first time in a month. If you haven't read for a month, yeah, you'll finish this in a day or two. <laughs> like, it reads very, very fast, but I don't think it's particularly good. So... We're on to our final book of the vlog, which is The Romanticy. I can't put it off any longer. <laughs> Fate, Inked, and Blood. 
do I have to? No, I own it now. Um, I do have the audiobook for this, so I'm gonna listen to some of it this evening, I think, whilst I maybe play some Switch games and stuff. But yeah, I mean, romanticy is not my thing, as we all know, so I'm not really holding on hope that I'm really gonna enjoy this, if I'm honest with you. Like, I'm a bit nervous about it. I probably don't think I'm gonna love it, but it's part of my endeavour to read a selection of all the best books, more the best genres of the year so far according to Goodreads. So if this is a bussin romanticy, I was gonna say romance, it's a romanticy, then um, we'll try it. We'll try it, let's go give it a go and I'll check with you probably tomorrow when I'm halfway through because I'm, I'm reading, I'm reading baby, I'm reading. Okay, I'll see you once I'm a little bit of the way through but don't expect much. <laughs> if I can do this. I do not know if I can do this. I don't know if I can do this. <laughs> so bad. I'm like 170. I've read more than that. Hang on. Let's let me let's have this be accurate for those six more pages I forced myself through. I'm on page 174 of A Fate Inked in Blood. I'm hating it. <laughs> Disappointing irrelevant uh if you're a hardcore fan great if you're not a hardcore fan don't bother cost me a lot of money rubbish but it's not even that it's bad it's just boring i'm so bored girly turns out girly is like oh my god she is so she is so um godly gifted she's been blessed by a god when she was born and so she gets married off to this guy to like help him be the warrior the big warrior but he's old and she's falling in love with his son and i am i do not care i yep 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 i do not care sorry the car's outside it's hot the windows are open i do not care i can't emphasize to you enough <laughs> how much i do not care how much i do not care i don't I don't care. I don't care. What can I actually say? I don't know what I can say to you. I'm just not a romanticy girly. Cite me a romanticy I've loved. Oop, you can't. No, I like the Norse. The fact this is Norse inspired. I like when they mention fjords because I'm like, hee hee, I've been there. I know what fjords look like. That's the highlight for me. When they're like, oh my god, a fjord. I'm like, oh, I can envisage this. <laughs> Yay, a fjord, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> This is so, I don't know what to say to you. It sucks, it fucking sucks. Do I think it's terrible? If you like romanticy, then maybe you'll like this. But I, I'm this close to DNFing it. And, and I don't wanna do that. Like this video, I wanna read all these books. I'm like, yeah, but, but I think my life would be better if I did. It's just, no, annoying. the romance is annoying me. It's like love at first sight. They're like super into each other when they first meet. And now she like hates him. Now it's like, oh my God, he's pissing me off, but she loves him. Oh my God, he's like so annoying, but like, oh my God, he's so hot, you know? You know? And it's like, I can't. I'm married to your father. <laughs> I've been warned that this was a bit incesty. It's not. It's not. It never reads like that. Like, she, the husband has another wife who he's this is true love. And he's, like, not interested in her. It's purely for this, like, prophecy that got given. So, so yeah. It, it doesn't feel weird at all. But it feels shit. <laughs> Suck. It's so bad. I've been listening to your book and I just don't care. And, like, they're going on this quest. And she has to prove herself on this quest. And I'm just... Oh, and he's been tasked with like training her and following her around. Guys, I don't think I can do it. I don't think I have it in me. I don't think I have it in me. I think life has been shit the past couple of months. Reading has been shit. I cannot tell you how much I crave a five star. I crave it. I crave a five star. What was my last five star and when was it? It's been a while. And I just, it's just I just can't get into it. It's not sexy. I'm not into them. I'm not when she's like, oh, a heat in my nether regions <laughs> bloomed. <laughs> no way. Like even, even there's some romance, like even fourth wing, God help me, even fourth wing, I could admit the sex scenes were okay. You know, we haven't had a sex scene, but we've had like sexy moments and I'm just not enjoying it. Guys, it's a no from me. I think I'm, I'm doing nothing yet. I can't do it. What's gonna happen? Gonna shoot me? I doubt it. 
They have to catch me first. I'm like a whippet. I can't do it. I'm just not a romanticy girl. And the sooner romanticy gets cut, the better. <laughs> oh god, guys, I can't do it. I can't do it. We're doing it. I just have nothing to say. To I've read all these. I've read all these words. Look at all these words. I read them all. I read all these words. But did I enjoy a single one of them? I don't think I did. <laughs> I think we're done here. So let's rank the books this video. This is last. Then. It's Murder Road, isn't it? Because that was a three. Then we've got two 3.5s. Hmm. I think we have to put the reappearance of Rachel Price next because it has issues. Then we'll put RuPaul because that was like, it was good, but just not amazing. And then we have two four stars. I think I'm going to put... Oh, that's hard. They're pretty equal. You could ask me on a different day, but I think I'll put the Ministry of Time at number one. Oh, so there we have it. That's my ranking, but pretty, you know, we had a DNF then there at the end, but I'm just, I don't even care. Like I'm so detached from it. It's not like an angry DNF. It's just like, why? Why did I decide to read that? Um, but there we have it, everyone. I've read all those books, the best books of the SFR Chronicle Trees. I was really hopeful I was going to get a five star from this video. I was really hopeful, but my next video, I won't tell you anything yet, but I have to get a five star in my next video. Can these cars stop driving down my road? That's really rude. You have no reason to. You have no reason to be here. <laughs> Go away. My next video, I have to get a five star. So there's that, but oh God guys, I just couldn't make myself do it. I read 170 pages, right? I've read it, and but would finishing this add anything to my life? Anyways, I'm gonna go make some brownies, which is fun. <laughs> and start a book that I think I'm gonna much prefer for my Patreon book club and um yeah thank you guys for watching this video I know it's a bit of a long one but this is a really I really love making this video and I really love getting to read a lot of 2024 releases from such a wide array of genres so it, for me it's a really satisfying fun video to make even if we didn't have we had two four stars that I think both of these I would really recommend to all of you pretty much I think you can all enjoy it so anyways thank you all so much for watching this video and I'll see you very soon in another one. Bye!